Hey everybody, Andrew Hogue here, your security, privacy, and forensics expert. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the recently announced OpenSSL 3.0 vulnerabilities. I was really curious whether or not mobile apps were impacted, and if so, to what extent, and was there a way that we could quickly identify whether or not mobile apps had OpenSSL packaged in? This will be a short segment where I give some overview of my findings, as well as a quick tutorial on how to detect OpenSSL in mobile apps. So let's dive right in. As always, I've posted everything out on my personal website, Don't Panic. Just go to andrewhogue.com, click on blog, and then click on how to detect OpenSSL3 and Heartbleed vulnerabilities in mobile apps. First of all, let's talk about why this is even important. On October 25th, 2022, OpenSSL took the unusual step of pre-announcing two critical security vulnerabilities in OpenSSL a week before they were going to release it. This is really significant because OpenSSL hasn't really done this in the past. And if you think back to the last major vulnerability for OpenSSL, it was in 2014 with Heartbleed, which had huge impacts on the industry and the overall security of the ecosystem. I think this was a really smart move by OpenSSL. While some people believe it may give attackers a lead, I really don't think that there was enough information out there for attackers to find some sort of issue. Instead, it gave enterprises and defenders early warning about the potential critical vulnerability and the steps they would need to take to identify it in their systems and then quickly swap it out when it was released. As the co-founder of NowSecure, I'm especially interested in how these types of vulnerabilities impact mobile apps. And so what I did was took a look across about 3,800 mobile apps to try to determine what percentage of them included OpenSSL, what versions of OpenSSL were included, and whether or not any of those had vulnerabilities. And I have to say that my findings were actually pretty surprising. So first, a couple of positive things. On November 1st, when OpenSSL released the patched versions, they actually downgraded the two critical vulnerabilities to high. The reason they did this is security researchers were validating whether or not the bug was actually exploitable and found that different mitigations in various systems largely prevented this from being exploitable. I think the other positive news is OpenSSL 3.0 is relatively new. So again, we didn't see it widely deployed in different operating systems, applications, or frankly, any mobile apps. In order to analyze mobile apps, I took a look at about 3,800 apps where I had previously run analysis and generated a software bill of material. I then looked for instances of OpenSSL and tried to determine whether or not they had a specific version that we were able to ascertain. Of the approximately 3,800 apps, 608 had OpenSSL bundled into the application, generally as a transitive dependency. So that would mean that the developer didn't directly include it into their application, but some other third-party SDK or framework included it in the mobile app. But what was really shocking was the percentage of those mobile apps that bundled vulnerable versions of OpenSSL into their application. 98% of the OpenSSL versions we detected across the 608 popular mobile apps contained vulnerabilities. That is pretty shocking. Not only did almost every mobile application bundle an insecure version of OpenSSL, 86% of them bundled versions with a severity of high. And last but not least, a full 30% of the OpenSSL versions bundled in mobile apps were fully unsupported. And if you include the versions that only have premium support, the number grows to 57%. Since the majority of these OpenSSL vulnerabilities are transient, it's highly unlikely that developers are even aware of it and have a premium support license with OpenSSL, which means all of the versions with the 1.0.2 branch are also unsupported. Of the apps that we looked at, about 90% were Android and 10% came in at iOS. And the most common third-party library that included OpenSSL was SQL Cipher which is an open source project that allows you to encrypt SQLite databases. The last thing that I found pretty interesting was doing a breakdown by verticals. And so the most common vertical where we saw vulnerable versions of mobile apps were finance, followed by healthcare, high tech, automotive, and then retail. There's likely some additional analysis I'll do and share in a future post. 
And I'm also going to probably release an open source tool that helps track down specific vulnerabilities per version of OpenSSL, as I found that that data was very difficult to come by through the various online databases. So what should we do about this? Well, I think the best thing that you can do is detect the versions of OpenSSL in either the apps that you use or the apps that you build. From there, you can then either mitigate the vulnerability yourself or reach out to the mobile app development company and ask them to address the issue. I do want to stress that this is where binary analysis really shines. If you are a consumer of mobile apps, you do not need the source code. You can run this analysis and then ascertain the risk to your organization across thousands or hundreds of thousands of apps. And if you're a mobile app developer, you can not only look at your code, but all of the third-party SDK code, which likely will include transitive dependencies with OpenSSL. As you may know, I'm the co-founder of NowSecure, so I'm gonna take you through how you can leverage NowSecure's binary analysis service to detect OpenSSL in mobile apps. If you wanna follow along, you can click on our 10 free SBOM offer. Once your account has been authorized, you'll be able to generate a JWT token and follow along in this tutorial. This would allow you to analyze your own mobile app or third-party applications that you use within your organization. And everything we do could be accessed through the web UI, a REST API, or a mobile SBOM GitHub action that we've pushed out to the GitHub Marketplace. I've already largely documented these steps in a previous post that I've linked to here, and that was really focused on a React Native mobile app and building a software build material in Cyclone DX format. I'm gonna go ahead and generalize this because the NowSecure platform supports both Android and iOS mobile apps. Now I'm just going to assume for now that this is a developer workflow. If you're a security professional and checking an app that already exists on the public stores, it's much easier because you simply go into the platform, pick the mobile app, and the scan will kick off. As we covered in a previous demo, I'm gonna go ahead and go into SPF Expert, and then I have downloaded the Joplin app. Joplin is an open source note-taking application it's written in React Native, and they have a set of packages that include not just mobile apps, but desktop, CLIs, and even terminal applications. We're gonna go ahead and focus on the mobile app. And so in here, you can see the React Native application and support for both Android and iOS. If you wanna set up all the dependencies on your system and build this yourself, go ahead and click through my previous post and follow those steps. For now, I'm just gonna change into the Android directory and if you were gonna build this now, you would just kick off a Gradle command and either assemble the debug version or the released version. Now to make things interesting, I went ahead and kicked off a debug version previously. And so the APK that I have, again, is nothing that would ever be pushed to production, but has development components, which will also likely contain versions of OpenSSL. Once you've finished assembling your debug or release version, you'll find it sitting on the local file system. From there, you're going to want to now upload it to NowSecure. In order to do that command line, you're gonna go ahead and export your API token, which you'll get from the NowSecure platform. So, nice little trick is actually hit the space bar so it won't store in your history. Export your API token, and again, you'll copy that from the NowSecure platform and you'll put your token in here. I've already done that, and so I'm not going to flash that on the screen here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is use curl, and we're going to pass along the API token that we just put in our environment variable. And we're gonna go ahead and post that out to the NowSecure REST API against the build endpoint. I'm gonna pass along the group ID, which specifies the unique uh, ID for the group. And then we're just going to upload binary data that we just built using the Gradle command and the debug build. After a successful upload, you'll get a bunch of information returned back from the API, including a reference to the assessment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use an existing assessment that's already out there so we don't have to wait for the binary scan to kick off. And here again, we're just going to use curl, pass along the API token, and then call the Cyclone DX endpoint and return the results of the SBOM. So here you can see components that are bundled in. Now, if you wanna specifically just look for OpenSSL, then you can always just do grep minus I, which means case insensitive and search for OpenSSL. And here you'll see in this debug build of Joplin, there's a number of OpenSSL packages bundled in and they are 1.1.0H. Now, if you go out and do the lookups against 1.1.0H, you'll find that there's a number of different vulnerabilities, two of them being high. Now, again, this is just a debug build, so there's nothing to worry about with the Joplin app, but a really great example of how you could assess either an app that you build 
or an app that we pull from the App Store and determine whether or not there's a vulnerable version of SSL bundled into the app that would put either your customers or your enterprise at risk. I posted some of the raw data that I generated during my analysis on the blog post. I've had to obfuscate and hold back different names because many of these applications have vulnerable versions of OpenSSL bundled, and of course, I wouldn't want to put that out there in the public. However, you can at least get a sense for some of the data, and then in later posts, I hope to do a deeper dive and let you know what else I learned from this interesting data set. I hope you found this useful and something that you can put to practice today, whether you're building mobile apps or using mobile apps in your enterprise. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time.